to get outside today because my studio was freezing. Um, in Florida, we've had some cold nights and because my studio and my husband's den is inside a big building that's basically a big cinder block unit, it really holds the cold. So it was a beautiful sunny day. So I grabbed my scrap journal and I am working outside on the tree stump in the gathering. That's what I call this place. So I brought with me some ephemera, some, you know, just a little travel kit full of supplies that I can kind of take with me anywhere. And some of the ephemera includes this little uh, white envelope. So it has a really glossy finish on it. So I wasn't sure what kind of inks were going to work on it, but I thought I would try the Tim Holtz Distress ink um, in the tea dye color. And I'm just rubbing some on. It's very subtle. And I apologize. The, the sun was so beautiful that it's kind of kind of making it hard to see what I'm doing here. But it is adding a nice kind of subtle aged look to this envelope. And you just kind of have to play with your materials. Um, if you have a matte finished envelope, obviously, it's going to be a lot different than something that's glossy like this one. And so I gave up on the little pad. I'm just grabbing the whole the whole ink pad and rubbing it on and you can kind of see how it's just kind of smearing and smudging on there which I kind of like I can tell it's going to take a while to dry on this glossy um, paper so um, there's not I mean, probably won't be able to finish it right now yeah that's not going to work <laughs> we need a lot more drying time so one of the fun things about these alcohol inks is that you can, um, I'm sorry, not, not the alcohol inks, but the, the distress inks, because they are kind of an alcohol base, you can remove some of it with a simple little alcohol wipe. Um, you could do this with a Q-tip. It would be really cool if your base coat of ink was pretty dry, you could actually lay down a stencil on top and then rub through the stencil with some alcohol um, wipes to remove some of the ink that way. And I'll, I'll try to demonstrate that in a future video, but that's a fun way to leave a cool pattern. I just kind of did some polka dots here. And I'm gonna see what happens if I try some stays on. Stays on, like we said in other videos, is really good at sticking to just about any kind of surface that you're working on, including plastics, um, glass, and it still works on paper too. So here I'm just stamping some circles down here. Not very well. They're not going to show up very well, but it'll be subtle. The weird thing is this is a black ink pad, but when I'm stamping them on top of this envelope, it's actually kind of looking like a purpley blue color, which is a nice, kind of a nice surprise. I'm just going to set that aside to dry because it's going to take a little while. The sun will help it bake. And I do want to say that I know that I'm very lucky in mid-February to be able to go outside and work on my journal in the sunshine. Um, I live here in Central Florida. I know the rest of the country might not be so lucky right now. I know there are plenty of places that are covered in snow and ice and are freezing. And just know that I'm sending you warm thoughts wherever you are. Struggling with the washi tape again. We all know about my love-hate relationship with washi tape. And this is why. Never seems to tear nicely for me. So I love black. I use a lot of black in my journal pages. It's a nice, really bold pop of, I don't want to say color, but a nice pop of, um, I don't know, emphasis added to your page. And I didn't have any plan as to what, um, I was going to do when I got out here to the stump. So I'm, I'm really just kind of playing around and seeing, you know, playing with the materials I brought, adding a little vintage, um, aged look to the edge of this page. This is some old sheet music. I think it came from not my grandmother, but a very, very old friend of the family who's since passed away. I could make a whole nostalgic narration about her and her two sisters. They never married. All of them lived into their 90s. They're amazing, amazing ladies. And one of them was very musical. So I've gotten some of her sheet music. 
I only brought a couple of different stamps with me. If you're going out um, away from your studio, you might want to carry just a little bag. Um, I've got some scissors, glue stick, a Sharpie, some washi tape, uh, a couple stamp pads. I grabbed my scrapey tool and a, and a few bits and pieces of ephemera to work with, and that's enough. I'm not going to be out here for a long time, but I did want to come out and do a little something in here. So I'm just stamping across the top of my page here. We're unifying the left and right side. Always try to bring something across from one side to the other. One of my favorite tools, and I haven't used it lately, but I just found a little container of them. These are just, it's just a little tiny piece of black crayon, plain black crayon. If you have kids, you can go steal one right out of their crayon box. But I just take the paper off, put it on its side and do a little rubbing. And it's just another way to kind of age your pages. You'll see on the left hand side, I've got some staples um, where I stapled something to the to the back side of that page. So when I run my crayon over it, obviously it's going to kind of leave the mark of the, the staples, which I like. Just adds a little texture to your page. And you can be neat. I was trying to be neat and to keep the, the crayon from going on the pages underneath, but sometimes I don't even worry about that. So I'm out here in the gathering, which is out on our property here. We live, like I said, in central Florida. Um, and the people that used to own this place obviously had horses at one time. And so this ring was a lunging ring or a practice ring. And we've kind of converted it into a nice space where people can sit or people can do journaling when they can't be in their frozen studio. So what I've grabbed here is a correction, what do I want to say, like a whiteout tape just from the local office supply store. And I love this stuff. Sometimes I'll, I'll use it to create my own spaces to write on. Or if I'm working on a page that already has text, I might white out some of the words, the phrases or, or sentences and leave the ones showing that I really want to have you know, pop through. Not sure that the Sharpie's going to work on here. Sometimes the tape is a little tricky. It's not great, but I'm going to try it. Actually, I think I'm going to switch to the pigment pen. I brought another um, pigment pen. I think it's made by Statler. And it's not working very much better. I'll try to do just maybe a sentence here. You just have to kind of play around with it. Because I'm out away from my studio. Um, I don't, I can't grab anything that I need uh, very easily. So what I'll probably do is go back with a, some kind of brush tip pen later, and that will work on top of this much better. Or even a, a fine Sharpie that doesn't have such a, a tiny little tip. I'm just going back. I covered over what I, what I wrote with the, um, with the Micron pen that just didn't work. I'm sorry, with the Sharpie. And I'm just thickening these up a little bit, kind of like how that makes the, the white lines a little bit more uneven. And like I said, when I get back to the studio in the future, I'll, I'll use some kind of brush pen probably to write some, some journaling on top of that. This is a sheet of clear stickers that came with a calendar that we received. And I've been using them all over the place. That's actually the second sheet that I've gone through or that I'm going through. And so I'm just going to flip through. Sometimes if I'm, if I don't want to stick with working on one page spread, sometimes it's good to just jump around and add a little bit of something here and there. This is one of the pages I did about the Burr brothers recently. And I think I'm going to single out one of these very distinguished looking gentlemen. Yep. He looks like a, he looks like he needs to be singled out. And then I think I'm just going to find another page where I can maybe, this is one I did not, not too long ago, little guarded thoughts pocket. And inside I just had a little card that said, 
how to create a sacred space because the picture on the front of it shows the inside of a, uh, I think it was a Cambodian temple. And I think, oh, let me just grab this again. My black crayon, I'm gonna add a little bit of some uh, texture around the edges. If you've ever done a rubbing with black crayon, like on a, a tombstone or, um, I don't know, I'm probably dating myself here, but I used to have, what was it called? Flip and fold fashions, I think it was called when I was a kid. And you had to, oh no, it's called fashion plate. That's it. And we would use a black, black crayon to uh, rub these really cool Barbie doll looking designs on the paper. So it's the same idea, it just kind of brings out the texture of the page that you're working on. Got a little pocket here. I think I'm gonna grab one of these um, replicas of some old Florida money, Florida dollars. I picked those up when we went to St. Augustine a couple months ago. We visited one of the national historic sites there. So you'll see, I've kind of gone through my journal and I'm probably gonna do a flip through soon just to show you guys how I've been working through here, adding a little bit here and there, some little tabs, some stickers, some decals, a little bit of writing here and there. And I think I'm going to add some of these stickers right here on this page, which looks like an old, looks like some kind of printed ledger, lots of numbers. So this is a very glossy um, paper that these stickers are on. So if you're using something glossy, obviously I have to think about if I put this down on the page, it's going to be harder to work over top of that with other materials. So that just might have to be an area that I, you can either use stays on on top of it. If I want to do some stamping, um, Sharpie might work on top of those. So I'm going to come back later. Thank you.